is very fusion. This is the topic. But before we start this lesson, please get your equipment ready while I wait. Thank you. Okay, please write the dates and then the learning objective. Today's learning objective is to understand the process of diffusion. Amazing. Okay, please answer the retrieval task questions in your book. First question, what type of cell is this? Second question, What's the function of the mitochondria, the nucleus, and then the cell membrane? We have three minutes to complete these questions. But if you finish before the end of the three minutes, can you please answer also the extension task questions? Thank you. So I expect you to pause the video now to answer the questions. Okay, amazing student. Get your green pen to mark your answers. Now, first question, what type of cell is this? So this is an animal cell. Second question, what is the function of the mitochondria? So mitochondria is where respiration takes place. Some will say energy is released in the mitochondria. That's fine. Uh, so what is the function of the nucleus? So the DNA is contained in the nucleus or the DNA is stored in the nucleus. And then the nucleus controls the activities of the cell. Some will also write that the chromosome is contained in the nucleus. Those are all right. So just give yourself some lovely tips if you wrote any of this. Uh, the next one is, what's the function of the cell membrane? So the cell membrane controls what enters and leaves the cell. So the cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell. Okay, so give yourself a score. Excellent, amazing, well done. Okay, at the end of today's lesson, you should be able to define the efficient. You should be able to identify sites for the efficient in plants and animals. You should be able to explain how and why the diffusion takes place at different sites in plants and animals. And throughout this lesson, you may mention some of these key words or terms. We have diffusion, concentration, passive, alveoli, leaf, and then stomata. Okay, please pause the video now to watch this YouTube uh, video. While watching it, please write down these five, at least five facts. At least, you can watch both videos, it's up to you. But these five facts must include the definition of what the efficient. You can pause the video now to watch the video clips. Thank you. Okay. Amazing. From the video, you must have written that diffusion is the movement of substance from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, or the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Also, diffusion happens in liquids and gases. That's because the particles move randomly from place to place and the efficient is an important process for living things because it's how substance move in and out of the cells okay example if someone burns toast in your kitchen there will be high concentration of the burnt particles in the kitchen but low in the living room. So after a while, the burnt toast particle will move or diffuse from the kitchen 
into the living room. So someone sitting in the living room enjoying his telly or her telly can then smell the burnt toast. So initially the burnt toast, the particles is what high concentration in the what kitchen. So from the kitchen, it will then diffuse to the living room that is in low concentration until the particles will be evenly distributed. So everyone can then smell the particle of the burnt toast. So can you think of other examples of diffusion? I will give us one again. If we spray, spray perfume, for instance, in the room, someone in the other room can smell it, though the concentration may what will not be high there. The concentration of the spray, uh, sprayed perfume is high in your room where you spread it, but low in the other room. But the particles of the perfume would diffuse or move from your room that is in high concentration to the other room that is in low concentration and the person there can smell it. You know, another example in liquid is if, for instance, I spray or I drop ink or dye inside a beaker of water. Now, looking here, you can see that the ink or dye is in high concentration at this point, but low concentration in these other parts of the uh, beaker. Now, the particles will then diffuse from this high concentrated part to the low concentrated part until it will become evenly distributed all through the water in the beaker. So a challenge question for you now, what might make the diffusion happen faster? How can we increase the rate of diffusion? Excellent. Yeah, increasing the temperature of this water would increase the rate at which the dye would diffuse. So if we increase temperature, we increase the kinetic energy of the particles. So the particles will move faster. And because the particles move faster, that would what increase the rate of diffusion. Another uh, thing or something else that can increase the rate of diffusion is the concentration gradient. So if we increase the con uh, concentration gradient, the rate of diffusion would also increase. What do we mean? If the concentration is what high here compared to here and it, the B is low, the particles will move faster if the difference in concentration is high compared to if the difference is low. So because it's high here and there is no particle here, it will diffuse faster compared to if you have some particles already here. So in mass, when you're after plotting a graph, you're asked to calculate the gradient, that's the slope, what's the difference between this end, that's the A and then the B. So the diffusion would continue or the particles will continue to diffuse until it is what evenly distributed i give another example if for instance you're rolling from the top of your set you would require no energy to roll down so we say it's what passive because you require no energy but if you are to roll up you require some energy so it's it's no longer passive or what active so because we are moving what from high to low so you're moving from high to low down a concentration gradient energy is not required and the what the steeper the slope the what the faster you would roll down So what do you think is the opposite of diffusion or the opposite of moving down a concentration gradient? So if you're not moving down a concentration gradient, you are moving what? Against a concentration gradient. 
So then we start talking about what active transport because you require energy to move up, but no energy to move down. Okay, to test our knowledge, can you please answer these questions? So please copy this into your books and then use these keywords to fill in the gaps. You have three minutes to complete this. Thank you. So you can pause the video now. Okay, get your green pen to mark your answers. Lovely. Okay, diffusion is the overall movement of particles from a high to a low concentration. The particles move down the concentration gradient. The diffusion doesn't require any energy to happen. An example of the diffusion is oxygen moving into our cells. So what's your score? Woo! Amazing! Lovely! Lovely, lovely! Okay! True or false? It's still to test our knowledge. So get ready now. First question. The efficient is the overall movement of particles from a low to a high concentration. True or false? Amazing! That's false because the efficient is the overall movement of particles from high to low concentration. Amazing. Second question. The efficient is an active process. True or false? Amazing. Excellent. The efficient is what? A passive process. So this is false as well. Well done. Third question. Down a concentration gradient means particles moving from a low to a high concentration. True or false? Wow! Yes, is what? False, because down a concentration gradient means particles moving from a high to a low concentration. Amazing! Question four. Passive means that energy is not required. True or false? Whoa! Excellent! So, passive means that energy is not required. Well done! Fifth question and the last one. The efficient is a Passive process, true or false? Wow, yes, it's a passive process. Amazing, well done. Okay, next task. Which substance you think will diffuse into the cell or out of the cell? Remember, this is chemical equation for respiration. Amazing. So oxygen will diffuse into the cell and carbon dioxide after respiration will diffuse out of the cell. Well done. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, you can pause the video now to watch this clip just uh, to um, help you in your understanding.